Yo, what up? It's Roger from the Mask Girl Podcast. New year, new podcast. Subscribe to the channel. Trying to hit 50K this year. I don't think that's so much to ask for. Subscribe to Mask Girl on YouTube. Follow Mask Girl on Twitter. Follow Mask Girl on Instagram. And you know what? Follow Mask Girl on TikTok for the tiny little clips from all these interviews today. First interview of the new year. We got one of my favorite emerging artists, Rio Vaz, fresh off his sold out Los Angeles concert last night. What's up, man? What's up, Roger? How you doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm great. My voice is gone. I it's, bet. It's shitty right now. Because it wasn't only you sold out the Echo, and then you went across town, you had like an after party. Yes, but you got even turned over there. It was fucked up. My ears were ringing all night. And that was your first time performing in LA? Yeah, first LA show. First show, sold out with the after party. Yeah. Evil Gianni, Ira was DJing, Zetra. It was fucking crazy. What was your favorite part of the concert last night? Was it seeing the kids lined up? Was it performing the songs? Was it meeting the fans? It was like, so I had, um, I was performing a song called Tantrum. And then in like the middle part, there's a section where like in an interview, I was like, I want my fans to get on stage and jump off. So I was like, if you want to get on stage right now and jump <laughs> off, get the fuck up right now. And then 50 fucking kids came up on stage. Dude. Oh my God. It was crazy. I didn't expect all of them to come up stage, but yeah, we just were turning up. And so what was the after party like? Was that more mellow or were you going crazy? No, it was, it was same energy. Yeah. Dance shit. We were playing Certified Trapper. We were playing some crazy shit, bro. That's so sick. It was dope. So the LA trip is off to a good start. The tour is off to a good start. Yeah. Because this is the first show. Yeah, for sure. You got a lot more dates coming up. But we're going to talk about that more. Let's get into how this whole thing started. What the people don't know is I actually met you. I don't even remember when. I flew to New York just to meet you <laughs> yeah. like two years ago, maybe longer. Yeah, I was like longer. 16, bro. How old are you now? 18? 18, yeah. You were 16. You had braces. Yeah. Oh, my God. I had braces. Yeah. It must have been like, man, I should have looked up what the date was. It was after COVID, right? I think it, no, I think it was like. It was right before COVID? No, it was during. It was like March 2021. <laughs> I remember. I remember that day. We had breakfast. Nice yeah. little waffle. Dude, waffle fire waffle breakfast. Um, 16 at the time. You were already having people like me fly out. So let's even take it further back. I read online that you started making music when you were 13. Yeah, 13. So from New Jersey, 13 years old. What was it like growing up in New Jersey? It was dope. I mean, I always had shit going good, you know. Had a, had a good family, had a good support system, you know. It was, I couldn't complain, honestly. Just musical-based family. I always knew what I wanted to do when I was just a little kid. Was 13 freshman year of high school or were you still in middle school? I was in uh, seventh grade. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so seventh grade. <clears throat> what kind of music are you listening to at the time? Famous Dex, Playboy Cardi, <laughs> yes. Summers. Go off. Autumn, shit, Nebuchadnezzar, bruh, that was my shit, I was like rapper, rapper days, Thousand Band Fawny, Uno the Activist, that was my shit right there, Lil Peep. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Heavy SoundCloud era. Heavy, heavy, heavy. So what made you decide from, I'm a fan, and I grew up in this musical family, to I actually want to try and make my own songs. Like, how'd that process start? Like, I always knew I wanted to make music at, like, an early age, even before, like, 13. I just didn't know when to start. So, like, 13 was, like, the moment when I was like, all right, let's just do it. Let's just finally crack down, get the mic going, the Apple headphones and the garage band. Let's open that shit up and just start making music. And I just dropped my first song, had 60K on SoundCloud. And from then on, I was Wait, just Wait, your like, first song had yes, 60K? Bro. And I just dropped it with no promotion. I don't know what happened. You had, how many followers did you have? Zero. How'd that happen? I don't know. The algorithm on SoundCloud at the time was like really different. Like it was pushing new artists and new sounds. SoundCloud was hidden back in the day. It was. You were finding new shit all the time. So I, the algorithm has always been on my side. It's just so weird. Everything has been so organic. Damn. So what song was that? It was called Rose. Not and out. That's private now. Because I scrolled through your Spotify and like, there's probably like only like eight songs before prom night that are still on your Spotify. Yeah. But how many songs did you actually record before that song? A lot. I have a lot that I've taken down. Like I had, I had this album and I had another EP, but like that was just shit I was making and then deleting because I, I look back on it now and I'm like, nah, I can't have that up right now. So you're in the seventh grade. You have 60,000 plays mm. on your first upload on SoundCloud. Yeah. 
Are you like running around school showing your friends or your parents psyched? Like what's the vibe at I that time? I was keeping my music a secret from everyone, like my family. Mm -hmm. But like people at school knew I was making music and like people didn't even know what I looked like online. Yeah, because you were still hiding your face at that point. Yeah. So I was just showing like my friends and like my cousin, like whose computer I used to make that song. Wow. So like my brother didn't even know I was making music. I Damn. just, I was like, I can't tell them right now. That's exactly how when I started the Masquerade blog when I was in high school, I was the <clears> first <throat> incarnation of this. No one knew. Yeah. I hid my face for years. I didn't tell my own family. I didn't tell my own friends. And mm. then finally, when I was like, oh, I can like do interviews, like I interviewed Mac Miller or something. Yeah, in, like, legendary fucking shit. 2010 or whenever that was, like his first interview. I it's say that wild. all the time. I was like, oh, I have to kind of put my face out there. So was that for you? Like it reached a point of I kind of need to... Like, I need something to post. Yeah, that was, like, prom night era. Like, I dropped my first music video, and that was, like, the face reveal for all my fans. It was a, it was a really crazy moment. They did not expect me to look like how I look <laughs> like right now. <laughs> they, did, they were surprised. Dude, I was pretty surprised when I flew out to Jersey to meet you because I knew, obviously, you're 16. You have this viral song. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn, he's so young. Yeah. I think I said that on a podcast with Cash Dami. Yeah, like, I saw that. He mentioned you, yeah. and we were like talking about young R or something. I was like, "Yeah, dude, he was so young when I met him." Yeah. Um, oh, braces is crazy. That was a whole era. Yeah, and then I just remember you guys were arguing that people call that part of Jersey like the sixth borough or whatever yeah and you're like no bro it's its own thing it's <laughs> yeah. not new york bro we're yeah. jersey we're jersey bro yeah. jersey cities we're going up right now jersey club my Ooh, God, yes sir um so you end up releasing prom night how old are you at that point you're you're 16, 16 as we so yeah i made that song when i was 15 times. okay and but like i I was holding on to it because i didn't like the song at all but like wow. i snippeted it on um on instagram and my fans really fucked with it. And my brother just told me, he walked in the room and he, when he heard me playing it on my phone and he was like, you need to drop this. You, need, you really need to drop this. And then I dropped it and then it went crazy. But then it, a year later, TikTok got that shit. Oh, it was a full year? Yeah, full year. So you, you didn't even have a TikTok at the time? No, I made a TikTok just because. Because I, it started the trend. Yeah, like I didn't ever want to post on TikTok. So I was like, at that point, I have to post something. So how many views when you first released it or how many plays like after a few months, was it just sitting at like, Oh, that's like 15,000 plays. And it it's not one of my most 500, 500 plays, 500,000. Oh, 500,000. <laughs> no, we're saying before the trend. Yeah. Before, before the trend it already had 500,000. Yeah. Because it was big in the Instagram editing community. Mm. You know how like editors would edit, like, let's say, um, like a drill music video with like pretty girl by Claro. Yeah. It was yeah, just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Shit like yeah, that on Instagram yeah. was really popular at the time. So they used prom night for that. A lot of that. So did you feed into that at all? Was there anything you did or it just happened? And I was just, just like, watch really, it blow up. I was um like tapping in with the editors. Like I was okay. in that community like heavily and they're like the reason why this song is where it is today. Like that edit community back then 2019 to 2020 was really important to the, the come up. Wow. And it was around that time that 2020, the pandemic happens, everything gets shut down mm -hmm. and then kind of like this hyper pop scene starts. And I feel like yeah. you get lumped into that, even though you don't make hyper pop yeah. music at all. Yeah. Were you friends <clears throat> with like Glaive and Eric and Quinn mm -hmm. and I'm, all I'm those? I'm friends with them now. I mean, like, but you weren't then. Nah, I was a fan for a little bit. I wow. was a fan of um Quinn. Wow. She was really good. Like yeah. back then. Glaive, I always knew about him. Midwest, I always knew about him. Alden. I was a big fan of Eric D.O.A. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he was kind of, he was around. He's a little bit older. Mm -hmm. He was around. He was almost making like, I don't know what to call it. Maybe like Lil Tracy sort of like, mm -hmm. I don't know, 2017 era SoundCloud stuff. Yeah. Uh, and he was really good then too. Yeah. He's always been good to me. Like, yeah. I still fuck with his music. I like forget what that one <clears throat> song is that he released and it was like before hyper pop existed, but it kind of felt like disco y mm -hmm. and it went a little up. Uh I was like, Oh, this is crazy and then was six it months Fantasize? later. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, that's like one of his biggest ones. That's a good one. Yeah. Um so it takes a year for it to even get to TikTok. Mm -hmm. When you have those five hundred thousand plays, you're sixteen, you're in high school. Yeah. 
are you like music is my life and it's my career and I'm going to pursue this or it still doesn't feel real at that point. That's when I was like really taking it seriously. Like that's when I knew like, okay, there's going to be a point where like the come up is going to happen. Like mm-hmm. there's going to be a point where like TikTok gets a hold of this and then shit was going to, like, cause I knew TikTok was going to go to that song. Yeah. So like I was just waiting for that moment and I was already preparing myself Wow. and it just happened. And it happened. It happened big. It happened. like the, the I didn't imagine it to be that big. Yeah. Like, How many videos were created to it? Like over a hundred thousand. A hundred thousand videos yes. created. Twenty twenty. Uh, twenty twenty one was crazy for that song. And it just randomly. That was a Polo G. It was one of the edits from that community <laughs> that made it blow up. That was the first one that blew up. Dude, I just someone just today sent me an Alex G song because he's all over TikTok, yeah. like all of his old songs. He is. It was like an edit about rappers who snitched. <laughs> and bro, the sound has like sixty thousand creates or something. That song is over that video. Yeah, I'm like, what? oh my gosh, this is so crazy. It's just the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> but dude, it works. It was like a sad song. I was like, all right, man, like I guess it works. Um so it goes viral on TikTok. What are you thinking the first moment you see the trend start? Because I think people might assume that, oh, it has 100,000 videos. You must have woke up one day and saw 100,000 videos. But in reality, it's more like, oh, five people use this. And the next day, 10. And then all of a sudden, 30, 100, 200. And it's a build up until that point until it catches on. Mm -hmm. And there's like 15,000 videos a day. Yeah, that's how it was for me. I was like screenshotting each time it went up. And then like each screenshot would be like it would go up by 10 more, 100 more fucking 200 more 300 more and it just like that's what each day just got bigger and bigger the amount of videos like it was made in a day to a point where it was getting like 2,000 videos a day crazy that shit was wild bro. I was just screenshotting it and you self-released that song on DistroKid or something like that yeah I did smart move use DistroKid when you're self releasing yeah I had it independently your music. for don't a while. use something that's gonna uh take the rights to the song exactly i don't want to name any names but <laughs> why don't you just use distro kid right everyone listening <laughs> Distro kid is fire bro independency is fire you could have got fucked if that was with some other service bro, like, well, actually own- we own the license Nah, i own i still own like a majority of that song fuck yeah who uh produced the song this random youtube producer bro it was a surf curse type beat and that producer disappeared like he just vanished bro i haven't talked to him in like two years that's insane. It's so wild. I just found it randomly in 2019. You I randomly think. found it. You used it. You put it out. Mm-hmm. You're a 16-year-old kid. You don't understand yeah. how any of this works. Yeah, bro. He knows about the song like going going up, too. And I just he has, I haven't talked to him in two years. Is he, I, is I he making he, money from it? No. He's not. That's insane. He's not. I don't know where he is. Holy shit. <laughs> I don't know. Is I mean, like the YouTube page still active or something? Yeah, it is. What the fuck? He just like has like I've I've emailed him a bunch of times. I'm like, sure you have. I'm sure yeah. labels and everyone have. He hasn't gotten back to lawyers. Me at all. Yeah, it's on him, dude. <laughs> that's that's his shit. It, there's a bag waiting for him whenever he uh, big bag. shows up. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure that is being put away to the side. I know how the music industry works. Uh, <laughs> he will be taken care of, folks. Don't worry about it. So. Going viral on TikTok, that's when people like me start to hit you up. Yeah. How many <clears throat> label people were reaching out every <laughs> single day? A lot. Had to have been every single label. It was a lot. I've met a lot of people. I've heard a lot of bullshit deals, yeah. bro. It was fucking crazy. Dude, we had meetings about you. We had, you know, like, that was the song. Yeah. Like, Prom Night was the song of that moment. I flew to New York. I met you. Uh, I don't even know why... It didn't progress past that point. I think it was like super expensive. Yeah. <laughs> I think your deal was like already, it was like, oh, it's going to be seven figures. I was like, oh, all right. Um, yeah, I didn't even sign anything at yeah. that point. Yeah. I didn't sign. I was still independent. Yeah. Like I decided to just keep it pushing until like I had actual motion from like Smart. A, with a bigger catalog. Smart. And like I just signed like a couple months ago. Yeah. Because did you eventually do like a singles deal somewhere or something? Yeah, I did a singles deal I, I, with Prom Night and the song Leaving You. Just those two. Which is, I always look back at that time as it's kind of ironic. Like, you chose not to sign, you did a singles deal, those singles ran their course. Yeah. And then you start releasing music independently yeah. again. And then what happens? And then it just keeps going crazy, <laughs> bro. I had like, I had three more other songs that went crazy. I, had, I yeah. feel fantastic that was independent through Distro yeah. Kid. And then I had You're a Parasite also on Distro mm-hmm. Kid. And the, I feel fantastic has like 40 million. Wow. 
Parasite has 20, 20 million. Oh, which one was the one that started all the label talk again? Was it I Feel Fantastic? No, it was Parasite. It was Parasite that really like made the labels like no, like okay, yeah. this kid is going up. Yeah, he's not just like a random one hit wonder, yeah, like, like a random. Like I Feel Fantastic kid. sparked it up again, but then like they thought, all right, he did it again. Let's see if he does it. He does it a third time. I didn't really like pay attention. They just yeah, they, they thought like it yeah. was just I got lucky right. But like Parasite went fucking crazy. So so how'd that happen? TikTok, bro. But like we're at that point. Like, is it like, oh, I know mm-hmm. now. Like, I've known the Instagram edit community, and now I know the people who mm-hmm. used my sound originally, and I'm gonna hit them up and ask them to use, or they just used it organically. It was organic. I just put the sound on TikTok. Like, I just snippet it. I put like um, I did a video of me in my stu- my basement studio of the song like playing as like a like a low quality snippet type thing. Mm-hmm. And then that like made the fans go crazy and like they're like oh you gotta release this you gotta release right. this then i started doing a whole promo run of with the actual high quality version of these like fast edit snippets like just me in cool locations and mm-hmm. then like stuff like that really hits the algorithm differently and people just really fucked with it and how many followers on TikTok before you started that did you have from like the prom night era i had like seventy thousand, and then now i have like almost two hundred thousand crazy it's fucking crazy so the whole process starts again yeah <laughs> labels are really now they're really aggressive they're yeah. like we need this that's uh, when i start going to la and stuff like, yeah you're flying to la you're yeah. going to you're going to new york you're meeting with people um at that point since you already you signed a singles deal and it didn't really work out mm-hmm and then you release music independently and it fired off. What yeah. made you choose this time? Like, okay, now's the time we're going to sign to a label. Because I felt like, as like I said before, like I had a catalog and I felt like I had like the, the fan base that I've been dreaming of, the cult fan base that is, mm-hmm. that's going to be there for me. Like that, I just wanted a base, like that base to build off of with a, with a major label. So, cause like I knew at that point in my career, it's time to like really have a machine behind me cause right. I know my potential and it's really working right now. Like from that LA show yesterday, mm-hmm. like I felt, I felt like X bro. Like yeah. how he had a cult yeah. fan base back yeah. then. Like that's like the only thing I ever wanted as an artist. They were screaming like the, from the first song to the last. Dude, I saw the video of the line. They had your shirts on. Yeah. There was a, someone with a shirt. It was like, I lost my virginity at Rio Rave. <laughs> this couple had like a, a picture of my face on their shirt matching. Shit was crazy. What was the bag like from prom night? Re- you released it independently. Yeah. Was it a crazy bag? It was a crazy bag. Independently, bro. I had yeah. that shit 100% before the singles deal. Six figures. Yeah. 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 When you get that money and you're 16, 17... <laughs> what do you do with it i'm saving that bro. what happens to it bro i don't even be sp- i don't be buying shit i'd be spend. i'd be um i'd be spending shit on clothes or i, j- I, s- I save a m- majority of my money what was prom night era most expensive thing you purchased as like i want to reward myself bro I think I was just buying Instagram clothes. I didn't even reward myself. Instagram myself. clothes. Yeah. Like now I'm rewarding myself. I just bought some Valenti shit. Fuck yeah. But, but like I was just buying shit like small um, small brands on Instagram. That's, yeah. that's how I felt like I was supporting myself. Just getting cool shit. Like that was my year of me getting fly. Yeah. Finding myself. Yeah. Uh, what was, okay, <clears throat> you signed to a major label. Mm-hmm. Don't got to say the number. It's obviously seven figures. Mm-hmm what was what did you buy with like oh i just i'm on now was there anything fucking crazy that you got (laughs) like the most i've ever spent was the fucking valenci jacket oh i bought a crib yeah Yeah, i bought i forgot about that i bought a crib yeah we got some assistance getting some assets man yeah (laughs) i bought a nice crib i got a purchased a house when like a couple months ago like two months ago in jersey in jersey jersey boy that's what i like to hear it's up and coming man and i I have like a garage in the back. Nice. We're building a studio. Looking real Sopranos in that bitch. Yes, bro. The Sopranos. Tony Soprano yes, house. Yes, bro. Big mob shit, man. Breaking news. Real boss purchased the old Soprano <laughs> house. I want to visit that shit, bro. <laughs> I, I can't believe you haven't. I, yeah, it's in Jersey, too. I've only yeah. seen the strip club, the Bada Bing. Mm. This shit is ran down. You went in there? Nah, I got scared, <laughs> bro. I just looked at it from a, from a distance, man. 
So you purchased a house yeah. for yourself, for your family, for like my family, yeah. And then Fuck like yeah. I, have, I have my space, big ass garage in the back, We're building a studio. Incredible, truly the smartest thing that you can do with your money. Yeah. Uh, Cash Dami famously on this podcast, it always goes viral on TikTok, <laughs> saying that he purchased a house for his family. Yeah. Uh, dude. You see so many artists just blow through that money so quickly and they think that so much more is going to come and it might, but it might also be a few years. Yeah. And a house, whether the market goes up or down, eventually the price of that house will be more than what you purchased it for, yeah, whether exactly. it's five Especially years or 20 city. years. Like it's an up and coming city. It's just getting, it's getting more gentrified by the minute. So <laughs> it's just like, why not? Yeah. Fuck it. Um, are you like doing like remodeling? Are you buying new furniture? Like, are you in it deep or you're like, I'll let my parents handle that. Now we're in a deeper remodeling that whole shit. It's like, it's like a crib with like three apartments in one building. Wow. And then yeah, each, each floor, we're just getting it redone. Dude, that's perfect. So like you have your own floor. Nah, I'm just renting it out to other people. Look at you, bro. <laughs> I don't know who your financial advisor is. Bro, my mom. The, my mom. Shout dog. out to mom. Shout out to mom. You're working overtime. She's a genius, bro. Who is this off camera, by the way, that we're staring at? Come over here. Get over here. <laughs> who is this? This is Henny. Big Hen Dog. He's hen my dog. manager right here. His no, manager dog. and brother. And oh. brother. Yes. He's this the, is. He started it all with the music shit. He introduced me to Young Thug. When I was like 11. You met Young Thug when you were 11? No. He, I'm just kidding. I'm just no, kidding. And he, he showed me famous decks. A lot of people. A lot of people. So fan too, you know? you're the computer that he was recording on. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you were also at the meeting when I met you guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you didn't have long hair, though. Yo, my shit, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It was, short. it was shorter. Yeah, uh, you know, some growth. He was the one, actually. I think we were sitting there. I was like, yeah, so I'm sure a lot of labels are hitting you up. Like, I'm curious where you're at. And he's like, yeah, it's going to be like a million dollars. I was like, bro, was right. right. I was like, all right. Uh, <laughs> He'd be speaking into the future, yeah. bro. Yeah. yeah. Manifestation. He knows this shit. Especially like if you know what you got, like, bro, you push for it all the way. Yeah. Facts. Real Let's shit. That, Shout out the brother. Shout out Henny, man. Shout out Henny. Hell yeah. Hen dog. Hen dog right there. Uh, dude, that's so sick. Um, so you're like picking out paint colors. Say that again. So you're like picking out paint colors for the walls. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we already did that. Crazy. Good shit, bro. I'm so proud of you, man. From the braces to a fucking <laughs> real estate mogul. Yes, bro. We came a long way. I see you. Um, so you mentioned that you weren't, you know, like you were just a kid and you weren't friends with those artists that you were a fan of, mm -hmm. but now you've since become friends with a lot of artists. Uh, yeah. I think one of the more surprising ones probably is Cash Dami. Like how'd that <laughs> like how'd that happen? Uh he DM'd me this is like late this is like December twenty twenty, I remember. He DM'd me because I had a song with my friend Trendy. It was called Parting Gift. And he he was he bro, he'd been listening to that shit before he even texted me, but like he found my Instagram because I joined his live one day. And wow. this is before he was popping. He had like twenty people in his live. Wow. And then he saw my he saw my name and then he got off live and DM me was like bro you crank, and then that's when we decided to make a song together trust issues. Mm -hmm. and, pff, wow. We we made that like early January, right way before the uh, his Epiphany album dropped. Yeah, it's like a what is that like a full year? Nah, he dropped it like five months. Okay. After. He dropped it in. June. That's like ten years in yeah music and <laughs> music <laughs> internet. Yeah, yeah. We, we were holding on to that song for a minute. Yeah. Yeah. That's my that's my homie right there. What uh, other artists have you become friends with? I I knew um, SSG Kobe for a minute. He also reached out to me. Same thing with uh with the Cash Dami, like the same thing. Uh, Midwest Skywater. Yes, that's my homie. You know, like Alden is really good in that in that scene. Shit, I don't really be having artist friends. I just be on my my own world i'm not gonna lie <laughs> staying in jersey yeah i'll be staying in my own shit band man bro i had a song with him you know, yes this guy crazy legendary that's a big jersey crazy. anthem yeah jersey stand bro, the fuck big up jersey shit, man. crazy that was like a big accomplishment of mine because i also fuck with his music like yeah. he's been putting on for jersey he's like the pioneer of like rapping over these type of beats so how did okay so we've spoken about the accomplishments we've spoken about the bags and the houses the most important part the actual music yes Prom Night is a pretty unique sounding song, especially at the time. Mm -hmm. 
how did that sound come to you? Because you're listening to like SoundCloud rap. Yeah. Like, were you also listening to other stuff at the time, or like, where did that all come from? Yeah, I was listening to the Smiths, like, like er, '80s British rock music, mm -hmm. like The Cure, and all that stuff. So that sound kind of influenced like the way I, I um got on that. Be like, woke up, got down. Like, right. Some, yeah. Some like real like alternative shit, and like, cause that's what I was really tapped into at the time, 2020. I was in my big indie bag. So, like, I really wanted to take that to the next level. And, yeah, that's really it. And you're not hyper-pop, as we've already said. No. Nope. What would you, I mean, real rave, but, like, what would you consider, like, if, like, you're in a meeting with, like, Apple or something? And they're like, yeah, fucking <laughs> tell us about your music. Like, what is the genre? I wouldn't, I can't even say, like, a genre. I'll just say, I just say real vase, or I'll just say it's electric. Yeah. That's really it. Because, like my my sound is forever evolving so it's like really impossible to consider myself one genre like i just love to say my name because that's who i am and like my sound is just real boss it's uh funny so i'm working with kenny uh oh kenny yeah that's the, bro, yeah shout out kenny bro. yes He's shout crazy. out kenny yeah. i don't even know if i'm allowed to say that but um <laughs> working with him very recently and kind of a very similar story to you like 16 17 yeah. blew up on tiktok um so, you know, in this process right now, it's very, like, introductory of, like, meeting with, you know, like, the Apples on the Spotify. So, it's yeah. like, oh, so, like, explain who he is and what's the music. And literally, instead of even saying a genre, I'm like, you know, it's like Rio Vaz, Skywater. Like, <laughs> I'm like, it's like that world, but he sounds like Michael Jackson sometimes. Yeah. And it's like, bro, I don't, like, I was actually... uh I just having this conversation with someone you probably know and i'll tell you off camera i'm not sure if i'm allowed to say it and we were having the same conversation about the genre mm -hmm. it's like it's not jersey club it's like indie jersey like there's just no name for it yet yeah like the the way like the lyrics and like the way you're singing on these jersey club beats it's just like you can't just fully call it jersey club i don't yeah. know what it is but Kenny can sing bro dude. I was in the studio with him in New York bro like a couple months ago that boy can sing I heard the song he did <laughs> we got to get that cleared I was gonna save it for off camera I'm gonna put you on the spot right now to your label that's listening can yeah. we clear the song I'm gonna follow up on the email yeah, that, we gotta get that song is hard that song is really hard <laughs> it's so good that was a magical studio session bro bro i'll never forget that shit he for real reminds me of you in a lot of ways but that same thing like braces mm -hmm. 16 i think when i first met him or like 17 and it's like yeah dude very talented i fucking wish that i when i was 16 i was like rich as shit and <laughs> famous yeah. and having viral trends <laughs> Man, i was I just blessed bro it's just like it's rare it's dude, really rare, bro. Dude, I was just fucking blogging away. I wrote 20,000 articles on the Masquerade Love blog. Just <laughs> Shit, and it's legendary, bro. Just you fucking did it. hoping it would work out one day. And it all worked out. It's you okay. You did that thing, bro. This isn't about me. <laughs> it's about Rio <laughs> Bot, the fucking goat, dude. Um, so, you're on tour right now. Yeah. First tour. Yeah, first headline. But you played a lot of shows before. I played... I did a Glaive tour support run right. in the yeah, Midwest. Yeah. Midwest is freaky. It's really <laughs> freaky, bro. It's a whole different universe. But I did my own. Um, what does that mean? It's just like, it's like, bro, it's so weird compared to like New York and like the East. Like, oh, I was in fucking Wisconsin. I thought you meant though. the artist Midwest. No, no, no. I, I was like, no. what does that mean? I love like, he has weird fans? No, no, no. The Midwest <laughs> of the United States. Yes, oh, yeah, yes, dude. Yes, the yes. worst place to tour. Shout out the Midwest, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, the Midwest is the GOAT. But the Midwest in the yeah. U.S. shit sucks. I was in Wisconsin, Minnesota. I was in fucking Cleveland, Ohio. Those like B markets. It's so weird, bro. The fans, yeah. are, the fans are weird. Because, dude, we're gonna the and Midwest isn't gonna like this portion of uh, the podcast. But they're <laughs> always like, you know, five years late. Yeah, but the hyper pop scene over there is so huge. That's like what confuses me. I think it's because of the whole Midwest emo thing. Yeah, and like emo started there, and hyper pop is like similar to emo in a lot of ways. And yeah, it's true. They just really vibe with it, like fucking American football type shit. Yeah, no, for real. <laughs> it's just I've never. That was my first time being out there, so it was just like a. It was like a big shift 
in a big like I had to adjust to like being there. But yeah, I did my own New York show. <laughs> I had to adjust to be. <laughs> I really had to adjust. It was a struggle. But what was the food like over there? Yo, honestly, you fucking I, uh, cheese curds. It was. It was. <laughs> it was Minnesota or Wisconsin had banging ass Mexican food. Really? That shit was lit. Wow. Yeah, that shit was really good. Have you had Mexican food in LA? I have. Okay. I just went to a taco truck today. In nice. the morning, I had a nice little steak. Dude, the, uh, I got the spot for you. So you're on your own tour now, though. Like, yeah. what goes into? I think people probably think like you're not a rapper, but like rappers or like it's only like you on stage. There's not a full band. They, oh, he just shows up and he plugs in his computer. Yeah, it's got to be a lot of like preparation, crafting a set list. Are you like running on a treadmill trying to get your stamina up? No. Like what goes into your own tour? Bro, I think it's honestly not even difficult because like <laughs> creating a set list is so fun to me. Like I, I did that shit in a day and we have this guy, Spencer, who works on like, because there's transitions between each mm -hmm. song and it like creates like a whole like cohesive thing and he kills that shit really fast and it's always perfect. And we have like these lights that are um, coordinated with the music. Wow, fire. And it just all comes together so easily. But like, yeah, I just I just be on stage with the mic and I'm just singing and I have like this little pedal that I have like my like presets on for each song that I just like change when the song ends. It's just like really easy, honestly. Do you play any instruments? I do, but I don't on stage. Like I would like to. Well, what instruments? I play the guitar, I can play piano. I want to play the bass. Ooh. That shit is so sexy. We're talking upright bass, the sexiest instrument of all. <laughs> the upright bass is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to be on stage with that shit? Just fucking you on stage like you can't even see. <laughs> There's like this huge thing and you're just like... The other fans the are going to fuck with that. Dude, sexiest <laughs> instrument, the upright bass. That's crazy. No, like I can see you with like a keyboard for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That shit's sick. I, I, I love playing. I don't even like know how to play it. I just like do what sounds good and it... I like I just do it by ear. Same thing with guitar. I took lessons for like maybe like three months, and I just learned everything on YouTube. Dude, um, I'm sure you can figure out the keyboard. Before this podcast started, I asked you to look at my soundboard for the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, bro, can you just make sure like all the buttons are right because my <laughs> fucking podcast producer isn't here right now, and you're like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> it What's looks your good. It's like not clipping, you know. Well, fingers crossed. Leave a comment if you think the audio is, uh, but what do you record with at home? I have that same mic, this mic. It's the only mic to use. It's beautiful. Yeah. I have this and I have an Apollo, like a, no, not an Apollo, a Scarlet interface. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just use FL Studio. It's so sexy. I love that program. And you've never been tempted to switch it up and I can't, I'm going to go crazy. I can't cheat on my doll. <laughs> I, I can't. I'm so attached. Does to the FL. microphone have a name? The microphone is the the shirt. No, but I mean, oh. like, have you named your microphone? No, no, um, no. I should. Yeah, it, bro, my mic on. would be like a Diana or something. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. It's like a sexy name. It's sexy, but it's powerful. Yeah, right. Diana. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That's just> hard. <laughs> New tag alert, Diana. <laughs> um, what are you most excited about for tour? Like, is there any city that's not in the Midwest that you're excited <laughs> to hit? Yo, I'm hyped you're for... You're doing Europe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Fucking London. London's about to sell out. Have you ever went to Europe? Yeah. I've been to only London and Paris. I was just in London in November. Was, oh, wow. I was with Brad, Scott. you and Skywater are out there. Yeah, I saw you guys Sky. on the escalator or something. Yes, bro. <laughs> that's my homie right there. Dude, fucking Skywater. Um, I didn't realize he was the same person because similar, you know, like... I hit him up in like, I swear it was like 2018. Bro, really? That's when I met him. Yeah. And there must have been a good song. And he's like, I'm in London. Was it Blake Homie? But he was popping at the time. He was with like, he had hella like Lyrical Lemonade articles. Yeah. He was, I thought that was his year. Like yeah. 2018, 2019. I thought he was going to blow up that year. And uh, and he's like, oh, I'm in London. I was like, damn, well, when you're in America, when you're in America, we should record a podcast or whatever. And then just like blew up like Crazy. three years four years later yeah yeah crazy and like he's friends with Lil Nas X yeah he's been friends with him they had, they had yeah. a song together in 2018 yeah like someone it told me the story it might have been Kenny or might have I forget who it was uh that like he knew Lil Nas X when he had like 300 followers yeah they were in like these like 
Twitter group chats together or some shit. Shit's crazy. Crazy how this shit works. Yeah. Uh, Skywater just got to come on the pod. He was supposed to the last time he's in LA. I'm putting the pressure on now. Um, <laughs> leaving this in the episode. He has to. He has come to. on the podcast, bro. Um, are there any artists that you were working with, like around that prom night era, that kind of just fell off and you don't like and like because it seems like there's all these connections of like oh I knew this person now they're big and this and that but like I got to imagine there was more artists who just never really made it right um no honestly huh like all the people I was working with like young chris cash dami like that's who I was surrounded around and they're all pretty big yeah they're fucking huge a young chris is probably my favorite artist out of that whole way I love chris he's so entertaining his songs are good. Mm-hmm. He doesn't take himself too seriously. Yeah. Uh, his sh- fucking shows are crazy. His shows are wild. Shows He'd are be insane. taking his clothes yeah. off and front flips into this. Bro. Like, He's a good ass performer, bro. Yeah. That's got it. that's definitely what sets people apart is like. That's how you make how's the live fans. show. Yeah. Because they see that shit in physical world other than the internet world. And mm-hmm. They just stick by your side. Like, are there any, when it comes to your concerts, are there live shows that like whether it's you know the smiths or whoever or more current acts or the people that like you watch youtube videos of like man i want my live show to look like that yeah in like 2017 i was i was watching trippy red concerts d savage concerts x concerts little peep concerts and like i'd watch it on my tv and i'd be like that's gonna be me like i want to do that it looked so fun and then like X is like the biggest inspiration to me as far as like how you present yourself as an artist and like how you make a world out of everything. And I think he did that so well. Dude, I'll never forget that tour that he was on. I think it was like a members only tour. Yeah. That's the one where Wi-Fi's funeral went to the hospital or something. (laughs) Dude, like every night on Twitter, something crazy was happening. Yeah, Like there were videos posted. I was like, holy shit, he's a fucking superstar. He's like, to me, he's like my Kurt Cobain. Mm -hmm. Like generational superstar, bro. Yeah, like, um, I think I was with Dill 35 MM, uh, the photographer, Mm -hmm. and he was, like, talking about Juice World, who he was super close with, and Axe, who he was, like, like, yeah, like, an entire generation, it's like, that's their Kurt Cobain. Yeah. Like, you go into Hot Topic, their shirts are going to be there for the next 30 years. Yeah. Like, kids are going to keep finding them when... They're 12 years old and they're finding, you know, it's like how we see people wearing Nirvana shirts and like people are going to watch this interview. But dude, Kurt Cobain, blah, blah, blah. Like, mm-hmm. of course. Yeah. But it's been 30 years. Shit just moves on, you know? Yeah. Music is ever changing, you know? People move on. Yeah, exactly. And like yeah. kids don't want to listen to what their parents listen to. Like, yeah, now exactly. Fucking people's parents grew up on Kurt Cobain or whatever and they want to find their own shit. Yeah, exactly. Do you like you have a problem with that with like not with kind of you make such unique sounding music do you get like any hate for not sounding the same as everyone else um no i don't really get hate i mean i I think i get hate from people who don't get it Mm -hmm. that's like the the destroy lonely fans or the concurrent fans who are just like no, I just want to listen to underground rap in yeah. the summers. Right, yeah. Like, they just, it's just people who don't really understand it, but, like, once they get it, they get it. New gen, Hyper Pop Daily, Summers fans. <laughs> the worst. They bet, the Hyper Pop Daily better post a snippet. I just shouted you out. <laughs> Hyper Pop Daily. It's, nah, shout out Hyper Pop Daily, though. It, what haven't we talked about that we should talk about? Um, New music. Yeah, this is for sure one of the ones that has turned into more of a conversation (laughs) and less of a structured interview yeah so the tour is happening that means new music is happening you've been teasing this project you're releasing singles Mm -hmm. what's up with the new music bro ep is dropping this month february 24th february 24th yes disturb the norm it's called disturb the norm it's gonna be like my debut ep sort of thing it's like an introduction for my fans who don't know the type of music i'm making or where my artist like my artist evolution is taking me so it's just like a hint of the future and then once they listen to it they'll understand what the future holds what do you want for the future between music life i want i want like a more like a more mature sound like like the music I'm listening to right now, I want to nail that for the, for the for my future music. Like I'm mm-hmm. listening to a lot of like 
like heavy music like title fight um dystopia yes. acid bath uh city of caterpillars like fucking screaming music yeah and that's what i want to do like because i can and i think it's like i've always loved like alternative music so i think this is my time to really do what i love what's your favorite title fight album or song or whatever they have a 27 27 yeah title fight 27 isn't that like their first thing dude it's so good i just because like it's like what's your fit? lucky number like i'm i say 27 all oh the time. right it didn't click for me yes yeah, how'd that whole thing start? Everything I hear out of you is 27, 27. Bro, but what's the meaning there? And, well, born. I guess you just told me, kind of. Yeah, I'm born March 27th. And ever since I've been born, I've been seeing the number 27 everywhere. Like, every day I see it, like, five times in, like, a very scary way. So I just apply it to my life. And I apply it to, like, me as an artist because I'm seeing it for a reason. And my fans kind of just picked up on it because I just be saying it randomly. And my fans picked up on it, and they just be making these phrases. They're like, "Oh, that's so 27." Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like they don't even know what it means, but they're just saying it, and it's really cool because, like, if if they're saying it, they they obviously feel connected to me as an artist, right? So it's, it's fucking hard. Fucking sucks that uh, the 27th of this month isn't on a Thursday night or a Friday. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you really got fucked. On I, that I did one. get fucked right there. Oh, what's the next? I don't know how to do the math, but the next 27 that's on a Friday, you got to drop a song. <laughs> I, d I just did. Uh, oh, okay. I literally just did. I think it was You Never. Okay. I dropped the 27th. Okay. Yeah. There we go. I'm sleeping. You already did it, of course. <laughs> um, You mentioned that when you first got the Prom Night bag, you were buying Instagram fashion yeah brands location which i still don't fully understand like it's like the ads or it's like the little streetwear brands like the little streetwear brands. okay like i was like brands. thinking like you got hit with those ads nah i was just like looking okay. up i was just like finding shit fire from, like, so these pages that like curate like like there's like this this page called like shirt shirt archives or some shit and they just tag the fucking they tag the the designer and i just follow them and then i i just dig myself a little wormhole so you mentioned you got a pair of Balenciaga shoes. Oh, I just recently I got I got Balenciaga pants. Oh, pants on me right now, and this fucking jacket was like six racks. Not this jacket, this is Ed Hardy. But I was about to say, holy shit, that jacket's six thousand dollars. No, 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 it's not. <laughs> but I got it at, at my crib. It's just like this leather jacket. It's like blue, white, and black. It's like real, it's real mob shit. What other, like, what's your fashion sense now? Like, are you coming into your own in the fashion world as well? Like, yeah. Or what are you into? I just like really big denim jeans mm -hmm. and like tight shirts. <laughs> like, shit, that looks weird. Like, but like, I just, like, if I'm wearing baggy pants, I feel mad comfortable. Yeah. Like, and it's, it always has to be denim. Jeans, mm -hmm. I love jeans, bro. And I'll just wear like New Balance shoes and then just like whatever shirt. People be asking me what my style is, and I just don't know what to say. I just put whatever feels comfortable. If we don't know the genre. We don't know the style of fashion. I don't know. I don't know what to like describe uh, it as. Um, oh, what are the rings? The rings. I got this purple one in London. It's like a lip. <laughs> purple oh, lip. Oh, shit. Sick. This is a brand from this um this girl named Rose. Um, She makes like these rings that are like molecules. I got this from a girl I was with the other day. She left them in my crib. Same ring, left it at my crib, this girl. And this ring, my friend Dito gave it to me. I think he found it on the ground. Fire. He said, yo, it's dented. It's fire. And then he just gave it to me. I uh, normally wear a pinky ring. And people are always like, bro, is that like Homer? Or what is it? I'm like, yeah, I got a yard sale for $5. <laughs> yeah, like, and, and like, I just have worn it ever since. I don't know why I'm not wearing it right now. I actually feel <laughs> naked. Yo, word, without my rings, I'd be like, I still feel them on my fingers oh, yeah. sometimes. It's yeah. so weird. Yeah. Um, so you got a girl leaving rings at your house. Are you stealing yeah. these rings? Are they gifts? She did not mean to leave them in my Should house. Should we be alarmed? Nope. I'm stealing them though. She's never getting this back. How's uh, life in that uh, part of your life going now that you're rich and famous? The the girl aspect? Yeah. I'm just having fun. Yeah? Young and beautiful. I'm not trying to tie myself down. You know, it's a good time. I'm 18. I'm not trying to <laughs> do anything a little serious, man. I'm just, I'm open. So crazy that you're 18. <laughs> 
Good um, list. what advice would you have for? I mean, you're only 18, but you're already quite successful. Mm-hmm. For young artists trying to make it, they might have not even recorded their first song yet, or maybe they recorded 100 and it hasn't gained traction yet. Is there any good advice for them? Yeah, just put out that song, bro. You mm-hmm. have to put your. If you're not gonna make it anywhere without putting that foot forward, and don't be afraid to be unique because being unique is that means you're doing something right you don't want to be like the rest like just because everybody is fucking with like destroy lonely or like that whole underground rap scene like don't be afraid to stand out because Mm -hmm. the people that stand out are the ones that make a difference and that's what i live by as an artist every day i do think that's first and foremost great advice i do think that's the hardest part with any sort of art really anything in life is that it's easy to look at someone who's successful and say, oh, I can do that and try and do the same exact thing. Yeah. But typically that person is successful because they did something that wasn't quite there yet, even if mm-hmm. it isn't the most revolutionary, even if like they're an artist signed to Playboy Cardi's label and they kind of sound like Cardi, but they kind of sound like themselves. It's like mm-hmm. they're adding their own tweak to it and like they're making something yeah. new rather than just like, you know, that's the hardest part and i mean that's shit is difficult bro i mean it's obviously hard for a reason or else everyone would be rich and famous yeah and that's why artists are geniuses yes but that's sure. great fucking advice um that's usually where i end the interview we might cut what i'm about to ask you and put it somewhere else in yeah. the interview um describe an every day in your life you wake up what do you do i wake up this is me back in Jersey. Mm-hmm. I wake up around like 2 p.m. Wow. <laughs> it's bad. My sleep schedule's fucked. I have eight missed calls from your manager, yes. 20 unread emails from your label. Yeah, I, be, I open my phone, just my <laughs> manager, emails, my brother, my mom. Yeah. I just, I try my best to get back to all of them. I brush my teeth. I eat some Cinnamon Toast Crunch every day. Is that your favorite cereal? So yeah, Cinnamon Toast Crunch or Frosted Flakes. I do that. And I'm on YouTube looking for beats. Um, you're still on youtube looking for beats yes it's the go-to uh, labels hate that i know but i think I, it's I, too I, bad like it's like the marketplace for me i, I had this conversation with cash dami i think probably i feel like i have it with everyone now it's <laughs> like i own a label with a major label and like i have to deal with it like yeah. i'm an a&r <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah it's because you gotta like it's a lot it's, it's a lot harder if, if you're not getting beats from like a, a person within the industry <laughs> yeah because <laughs> it's like a whole, it's like more steps and you might never find that producer and you might have to open up an escrow account with yeah. their <laughs> with their fucking fund and hope that yeah. he one day responds to that email through you like the, the best beats be on youtube like yeah. the most unique for shit. a fact the most unique shit be on there bro like youtube producers got it they still they're still busting yeah for but, a fact so you do that um what's next i um I f- let's say i find a beat i go into the studio like my basement and i just try to record a song off of it and if i don't like it i'll hate myself and if i like it i'll be listening to that for hours and then after that i'm playing fucking ps2 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 i have tony hawk underground oh my god i just got san andreas i never played san andreas before bro I just got that. I have. Um, I'm so jealous that you get to experience San Andreas <laughs> for the first time. Yes, That's right. my favorite one out of all of them. It's so good, bro. The storyline is crazy so far. And I have um, NBA Street Volume 3. What else do I have? I have this fucking SpongeBob game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit goes crazy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm on right now. I want to get that um, WWE SmackDown versus Raw 2007. Wow. I want that shit. I was a big WWE fan. Yeah? Yeah. Like, I see you're wearing you see uh, the shirt. shirt. Bro, Degeneration X. I want to know how the much blueprint. that was. They're the blueprint, bro. Dude, so hard. Them and Jeff Hardy was my biggest fan. Fucking goats. Like, I was a really big fan of Jeff Hardy. Dude, I, I saw... Uh, I was a really big wrestling fan when I was, I don't know, in middle school or something. And then I eventually, I guess, grew out of it or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I saw, um, what's his name? Mankind. Whoa. I saw him in the airport. Really? And (laughs) so he's ahead of me in security. And I'm like, that's not him. You know, he's older now. I haven't seen him in a while, but he's huge. Uh, Mick Foley is his name, right? Yeah. He's like like, Cactus Jack. Yeah. Fucking. I wonder if he's getting paid for that. (laughs) Um, I had like his book when I was like in the fifth grade. Uh, my brother had the rock book. I had the McFoley one. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
So I'm like, damn, he looks so familiar. I went on his Instagram. I saw him wearing the same flannel and the same yeah. beard color and everything. I'm like, that's him. I'm not going to be annoying. I'm not going to ask for a photo. I'm just going to be like, yo, dude, huge fan. Mm. And that was it. And like, I have this all made up in my mind. <laughs> he goes through security. There's a few people. I go through security. Random search. My sweatpants were too baggy. Uh-huh. I like they're like oh, there's all these spots on the screen here of like yeah. oh all these spots we have to check and they're like you want to go in the back room and do this or you want to just do this right here I'm like right here just do it right <laughs> here and he's like all right settle down I'm like come on that's fucking Mick Foley it took forever I didn't get to meet Mick Foley no <laughs> come on goddamn TSA ruined my no, life they, once again they fucked that one up yeah baggy pants L uh. Tony Hawk Underground one. Yeah, it's one of them. It's the one in New Jersey. Yeah, it's the one in Jersey, and yeah. uh, Muska comes with his Escalade, mm. and it's with that guy Eric, who's a dick. Yeah, dude. For some reason, I'm getting clips of that game on my TikTok. Really heavy. What the hell? Just like the storyline cuts yeah. or whatever. <laughs> like, how far are you in the game? Or did Not you already far finish at it? All. Oh, I, I literally just started it. I, I was gonna just ruin the ending. For yeah, you. don't 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 Dude, tell me. Oh man, I remember playing that game for the first time. I think I probably just went through it in like a day or two. Damn, really? My favorite video game. Dude, I mean I just played for like forty eight hours straight. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. It's like this is oh dude, it's so good. It's fun so far. I'll be playing skate three. Ooh. That's my shit too. Skate three on PlayStation two? Nah no, nah, <laughs> on the fucking Xbox. <laughs> that shit's I good. mean apparently they're making a new one. But I'm waiting for that. They they announced that like a minute ago. It's it's never gonna come out. They capped. Yeah. Like what kind of like media are you consuming? Like are you on a TikTok a lot? Like what side of TikTok is your for you page? Oh, it's like a lot of like film, like movies or like emo bitches or like <laughs> Just like really like like Deftonesy shit, dude. Like that fucking Deftones, they're all over TikTok. They are, like I can't escape it. And like everyone's sampling them now. And hard rock, yeah. sampling them. Yeah, I think, yeah, hard rock's fine. And like guess lonely and Ken Carson also did. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah, I think I think lonely's about a lonely's more on that side. He's about to make this. I think he's about to make a song with this artist called Panchico. That sounds really familiar. Panchico's fire. You should listen to them. They're sure. like this band from two thousand, like the two thousands, mm-hmm. and then they just blew up. They blew up on TikTok like a year ago. Wow! And like they were unknown for like twenty years, but I think someone found their record in a, in a fucking uh, record store, and then like that's just how they blew up on TikTok. Wow! She was random as hell. And you said that Lonely's about to make an album with them. That's what he said in an interview. I saw. That's crazy. Okay, Rio Vaz, what is your death row meal? Oh, that's a good good ass question. I've never gotten that question. Probably watermelon. That's it. Yep. Usually people's lists are like a five course. You just want a watermelon. Watermelon. Are we saying cut, uncut, seeded, unseeded? Big bucket of water, like a nice little bowl, plastic bowl. And it just slices watermelon. So Ooh, yeah. watermelon and mango, just Ooh. fruits, bro. With the red, with the, with the red, red spicy shit sauce it. on it. Yes, that's my death roll. Dude, man. that shit is so fire, bro. I uh, need that. What were you in jail for, by the way? Um, tax fraud. <laughs> tax fraud. <laughs> tax fraud. Nah, dude, you got a fucking team behind you. <laughs> um, do you have any tattoos? No, I need one. I want a neck tattoo. What are you gonna get? 27 some 27 i need my first tattoo to be some 27 shit i want a grill like a tooth cap sort of thing like like not the full shit but like on the side yeah it's just like 27 engraved in that i need that should i get a face tattoo obviously (laughs) of course no you you absolutely shouldn't (laughs) we'll see about that man maybe if i'm feeling silly i saw someone at cha-cha lounge in los angeles which is like a popular hip bar that uh, like a lot of people from our world actually hang out at, and he's a famous person on the internet. I won't go into much more detail on the mm. face tattoos. I'm like, damn, dude, it's too much. It's too much. <laughs> it's too much. Like I get it, but damn, like yeah. you're a little older now, and like, <laughs> yikes. Nah, tattoos just look terrible over time, especially yeah. on your face. I don't have any either. I think it's too late for me. I want hand tattoos too. Maybe some shit that goes from like my. my forearm to my hand 
So T W E N T Y two seven. It fits perfectly. <laughs> it could work. Yeah. Oh yeah, some finger shit. Yeah, hard. I need that. Um, any other questions that I can go viral for, bro? Bro, I think this is gonna go viral. <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> this is legendary, bro. Mask Gorilla Podcast. Thank you. Shit. It's been a long time coming. It's- Rio Vaz, fresh off his sold out yes. Los Angeles concert and after party. Yep. Headed on tour. New music coming later this month. A whole damn EP. Yeah. Eight tracks. Eight tracks. Not 27 tracks, nope. folks. That's the album. Yeah. 2027. In, in 2027, yep. I'm going to release a 27 song album yes. on the 27th day of the year. Exactly. Just wait. Just wait for that one. Wait for it. There we go. Hell yeah.